Dead Chow Duo Podcast, episode number 32. How are you doing, Alan? Doing pretty well. <laughs> Andy? Straight faced. <laughs> yeah, I'm annoyed, but we're going to go with that intro because somebody on Twitter said they enjoy hey, you that. you never we... show them the actual intro. I there was don't. A, a couple weeks span yeah. where I would start it off with, hey guys, Minecraft episode number 12. Yeah. <laughs> and I got called out today. People were saying, like, yeah, you always talk about the other intros being better. Well, the truth is they're not better. Sometimes I mess around with the first one, and Alan gets mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm that just... Time was I'm, I'm really annoyed that you're calling me Alan right now. It, it, like, so, <laughs> the second time was accident. So one thing... the One of the reasons it annoys me so much is I've noticed older people, specifically, I will tell them my name is Alex. And yet they still grasp on to Alan. And to this day, <laughs> there are several members of Ashley's family that call me Alan. And at this point, I don't even correct them anymore. I just <laughs> go with it because I've already corrected them half a dozen times. They've yeah. made it up in there. I've tried getting them to call me Al instead. And, you know, I only let like the only people that call me Al are like my boys. Like you got to be yeah. my boy or like, like, I mean, one of my best friends or my mom or like my wife, right? Your best friends. But <laughs> you, you know, only my boys call me Al, but I was like, just call me Al, not Alan. And they still insist on Alan. So I just gave up. I just gave up. I just go with it now. Does so Walter call you Alex. I'm sorry. Does Walt call you Alex? No, he calls me Al. But you know, me and Walt, I mean, like, Walt's, Walt's my father. Walt's my father-in-law, by the way. Anybody out there listening? Me and Walt are like super tight. I mean, we just hit it off immediately. Like a lot of people, when they date a girl, they're always worried about like, what's their dad gonna be like? Man, me and Walt, we were just two peas in a pod. Man, we like sports cool and dude. beer and all that. Yeah, really cool guy. I don't think he listens to the podcast though. But if he's out there, what up, Walt? Oh, he doesn't listen. No, okay. <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna say something. No, I'm, I'm gonna kidding. say terrible things about Walt. No, yeah, I'm big say up, terrible things. Big up, too charismatic. Yeah, big up, too some, charismatic. <laughs> big ups to my main male Walt out there. But yeah, anyway, Andy, how are you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been better. I'm sick, apparently. Well, yeah, I'm starting to show the signs. Yeah, that's fun. I feel bad for you, man. But before before we get into how our days are going, yeah, I want to do a special announcement just in case anyone is skipping to the podcast. Yeah. We have a special episode coming out this week. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're coming out with an E3 special show where we're going to break down all of E3. Well, the conferences. We're not obviously going to be there. Um, but we're going to break down the conferences. One, because, you know, why not? And two, I feel like if we wait until next episode, it would just take up the entire episode talking about it. It probably will. I think we're going to get a like, 45-minute discussion out of it. I don't think it'll really even be like a full-fledged episode. I think it'll be kind of... It'll be kind of short, but it'll be its own thing, which I like. Looking forward to E3. Longer. I don't know. Maybe. I, you know, it's, it's difficult with E3, man, because like, I was like a guest on Lazy Gaming Guys... Uh, if you go to yeah. lazygamingguys.com, you can check them out. But I was a guest on their E3 special, and I put it on my channel, and I thought that discussion was going to go a lot longer than it did. But it was kind of a light E3, believe it or not. It was yeah. like, and I, I mean, don't this know. Year, Sony isn't even here. Yeah, that's part of it. I figure we'll cover Sony's because they're doing their own conference, right? As is Nintendo. Uh, like, they're doing their own thing. The, uh, Sony, I don't think is showing. Well, they should be all. doing something. Nothing. I'm pretty well, sure. okay. Well, then I guess we'll do like I will gloss over any announcements they might I'll make. Break over. I'm sh obviously going to break down the Xbox. Yeah, okay. Xbox would definitely be a big part of it. Nintendo will be as well. Ubisoft. Sony will see what happens. EA. Ubisoft. EA's always EA. boring, but EA is yeah. See, but the thing with EA is they never show us what we really want. They've already announced the entire schedule. Like, I, they, they, like you could look up right now exactly everything they're showing. Like, show me Madden gameplay. I don't want a trailer. 
I don't want a trailer with CGI all the... CGI trailer? No, I don't want that. I want gameplay. Show me gameplay. Show me that it's better. All right, and that should come out Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, so be on the lookout for that. And then DCD33 will be, you know, that Sunday, so it's not yeah. affecting the regular release of the podcast at all, so don't think that. But, yeah, should be cool. Looking forward to it. Andy? So how, how was your week? <sighs> Cutting back to that. Oh, man, you know, like, same old, same old. I, I don't know, like, just stress to the max, but... I have been watching quite a few cool things. Obviously, I talk about it every week. I'm making a second playthrough of The Office, the U.S. version. That's been a lot of fun. Wrapped up Chernobyl on Monday. Yeah. It was the final episode of that. We're going to get into that a little bit later. And I did watch a couple movies that were not DC Film Club movies. Uh, one of the movies is actually my pick for next week. I'm looking forward to going mm-hmm. back and watching that. But I uh, also watched Get Out with my wife, Ashley. I know I'm late to that party, but I really wanted to watch it before Us hits home release because I didn't see Us in theaters, but I told yeah. myself I will definitely buy it on home release, but I really wanted to watch Get I Out beforehand. Us came out digitally because there's an ad for it on IMDb. It, was it has. Now. It it has I come out digitally. Ad, but the day before it came out or something yeah. like that. Like I went to go check it out, and it was like it's not there. So I'm kind of weird when it comes to movies. If I can but, find a digital you know, code for a movie, that's really I don't like that movie. I don't know what's you going can't see on. It. What what was that? I don't like that movie. Oh, that's a nice poster, man. Would you get that from work? Yeah. That's badass. So, uh, I'm kind of weird when it comes to movies. If I could get a digital code for cheap, I'll, I'll like like when they do 4.99 digital codes on like movies anywhere or Voodoo. A lot of times, I will buy movies because it's cheaper to do it that way than trying to track down a physical copy that has yeah. a digital code. But when it's a new release like us, I, I try to get the steel book so that I get the physical copy and the digital code, uh, and I enjoy both. I, I like. I, I'm not really hard line on the physical stuff. I, I really like to get both the code and the, cause I realized the next consoles might not even have a Blu-ray drive in them. So, and I'm not buying a standalone Blu-ray player ain't happening. Sorry. Just keep your Xbox. So then, yeah, that's true. I probably won't get rid of my Xbox one X for that reason. And that reason alone. But, um, and then I've been playing a lot of world of Warcraft and Forza horizon four, which has been a real treat to play that one. Andy, what have you been watching? What have you been playing? Uh, watching, uh, a sh- <laughs> I caught up on AP Bio. A couple episodes of messed of that. Okay. Um, I've been watching an MTV show that I'm not. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit, but just admit it. <laughs> I'm watching a show called Awkward that's really awful, and I gave it a review of four out of ten. But I've also watched three seasons of it. Okay. So you're so. hate watching it. No, it's not even like that. It's not even like I hate watch Thirteen Reasons Why. Yeah, it's like the show's awful. I want to see the end of it. I don't know why I watched so much of it, but I have. I felt that way with a TV show called Pit Boss. I hated that show. I thought it was a dumb premise. I thought it was unbelievably fake. But anytime it was on, like late night, and there was just nothing else on, I'd just sit there and I'd watch. I'd be like, "This is so dumb." I, but I'm sitting there thinking, like, I don't I'm have watching no it. no emotional attachment or anything to this. It's just on. Yeah. Th- that happens. Watched, uh, Those Chernobyl things happen sometimes. The film club this week. Oh, that's true. What have you been playing? Uh, the NHL, that's it. NHL? It's free on uh, Xbox Games of Gold yeah, right now. So. Played NHL. Get it now. Played some, some chess. Try it out. Um. Yeah, that's all. Well. I do, I do have something. You should sign up for uh, Letterboxd. What is that? It's a social media for movie reviews. I should probably do that. I would I would enjoy that. I, you know, I used to tell people that I wasn't much of a movie guy, and then I started this podcast with you, and we got to talking about movies at some and point, and then if you have letterboxed, yeah, 
it molded into as well it kind of it kind of molded itself like our discussions on movies molded itself into this segment of dcd film club which i've heard listeners seem to like that segment so it's kind of become a cool thing i don't know if you have more organic called me my uh, thing is andy holsey you can check out like all my film reviews you can look at my my watch list of 1600 movies might inspire you to watch some things Ooh, I, but the only weird thing about Letterbox is you can't do TV shows. It's only see, but I like uh, that. I'm okay movies. with that because so I, like, I think my there's IMDb a big difference. watch list is like 1700 and something. Yeah, I'm looking up this app right now. I'm I'm totally listening to it's you, but I just don't want to. Letterboxd. Oh. And you I can follow. I've... You can follow people, or they can follow you, and then like if I review something, it'll pop up in your feed. I think I've seen this before. Um people posting screenshots of this on Twitter, but th- this is interesting. I'll, I'll sign up tonight. I look forward to that. So I'll follow you, Andy. And, um, I don't know what my handle on there will be, but I'll try to update you guys next week. If I can remember. So we have listener questions. A couple this week. <laughs> one on my thing. <laughs> well, I think there's only three, <laughs> uh, and a couple of them are basically just jokes. So we which have is, one from Colbster. Yeah. Which is, which is fine. Which NFL playoff team last year will have a drop off come next season? Andy, I'll let you lead off. Uh, starting off with the, I have three. Two of them are kind of hot takes. Okay. Uh, the first one's the Texans, which it's just the the competition, in the division. I don't think they're gonna be the three seed. I feel like the Colts gonna win the division. Um. And also, they didn't help out anything on the offensive line. Helped Deshaun Watson not get sacked like he does every like all the time. He gets hit a lot. Um, and then I have the Chiefs as my number two pick. I can see that. Um, and then the kind of super hot take is the Bears. I, can I feel see like that the loss too. of Vic Fangio is more than people are expecting. Which the Bears are in Vegas, the most bet on team to win the Super Bowl. They're not the favorite. They're the team with the most money on them. That really doesn't surprise me too much that they're a team with the most money on them. This question was a tough one for me. And by the way, thanks, Colbster, for the question. Thanks for being a listener on the podcast. I really appreciate it. But, well, we both really appreciate that. Um, Houston's a good pick. I didn't really give them a lot of thought, but I agree with your points. Mine is the Baltimore Ravens. And the reason I say that is I have – so, oh, man, this is going to be a really <laughs> delicate one. So I like Lamar Jackson, and I know Andy is also pretty high on Lamar Jackson, if I remember not correctly. Not anymore. Okay, not anymore. So I'm still pretty high on Lamar Jackson. I think that he has a very high ceiling. I At think- the same time, I think that his potential floor – He's one of those high risk, high reward type players in terms of his ceilings unbelievably high, but yeah. the floor for him could be pretty low. We've gone back and forth about him. My opinion's changed on him. I mm-hmm. used to think he was super underrated. Now I think he's super overrated. Yeah. I'm not really one of those that subscribes to the whole he's a running back, not a quarterback thing. I think that's no, kind of I st- think he's a quarterback. I think that's kind of stupid. <laughs> I, I hate but- that meme. I hate that line of discussion. I hate that some people actually believe that that's a valid talking point. So I'm not, I'm not really going there with it. So please don't think that way. But I do think that he's like a lot of young quarterbacks and this has nothing to do with him being a running quarterback, but a lot of running, a lot of young quarterbacks struggle with this. The second time a team sees them, they know what they can throw at them. Yeah. They've been able to watch tape. They've been Colin able Kaepernick. to see what they do well, what they don't do well against, that kind of thing. And, you know, Brock Osweiler is a really good example. I'm not saying that Lamar Jackson is going to be Brock Osweiler, but when the Texans faced him, Last year, they they jokingly said, like, we knew what Brock struggled with. He played here, you know, for Christ's yeah. sakes. Like, we know what to throw at this guy based on tape studying. The Chargers were the only team to face Lamar Jackson twice last year, and look at what they did to him in that second game. 
they they minimized him to uh, pretty much a minus. I mean, he he wasn't even he wasn't even a positive aspect of the Ravens. I mean, unpopular game. opinion though. Yeah, the Chargers are the best team in the AFC. I like the Chargers a lot. I just think that the first time they faced Lamar Jackson, he really exposed a lot of holes in their defense. The second time, they knew what to throw but, at him, uh, and they did, like and it a, really killed him. I know you were ignoring this, but running quarterbacks seem to do that to where like teams just don't know how to do, like don't know how to stop them until they start figuring it out with yeah. film. At, like a pocket quarterback, it's easier to figure them out, like at the beginning. Yeah, Michael Vick was similar, and I, I, I'm not again. I don't want to make a comparison of Michael Vick to Lamar Jackson. Obviously, they have different strengths, different weaknesses, but they were both running quarterbacks that relied heavily on athleticism. And you know, it's it's interesting when you look at Michael Vick's early days. Teams that started facing him more, specifically like division rivals like the Bucks and the Panthers. They started finding out ways to minimize the damage he could do with his feet and started making him, you know, have to throw more and kind of get out of his comfort zone. So my pick would be the Ravens. I like Andy's picks, though. To um, the opposite side of the question, what yeah. team steps up? So for me, I really think it's – it's the Colts. I I really yeah. like the Colts. Both, both AFC wildcard teams. I think won their divisions next year. You look Colts at the, and the Chargers. Yeah, you look at the Colts and Andrew Luck is healthy again. Finally, yeah, he the looked, offensive line is amazing. He too. looked like a million bucks last year. Andrew there Luck was did. an eight or nine game stretch where he didn't get sacked. Exactly, and. I also think that the Colts have a lot of young players who are going to take that next step, are going to get just a little bit better. So that would be my pick next year. I think the you know, like it would be easy to say like the Chargers because, you know, I, yeah. I love the Chargers. I, I've been a big fan of the Chargers. I think Phillip Rivers on that team, if Phillip also Rivers the Chargers is playing 13-4. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't care what anybody says, man. If well, thirteen three, thirteen the, four, if the Chargers have Philip Rivers, they're in any game. It, that's it, point blank. Like, as long as Rivers is in there, they have a chance. He's that good. It's like Tom Brady, dude. Tom Brady yeah. with the Patriots, they're always in the game. I think we're on cat flip number four. <laughs> it's been a heavy uh, all right cat flip episode. Let's get so, past the sports because. There's people that don't like it, apparently, according to Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? A lot of people said their least favorite is sports. Um, but uh, Real quick, a uh, couple other listener questions. Uh, we're going to rapid fire these. Brian Shoup. If it's Brian Shalp, Brian. I'm so sorry. I always forget to, how to pronounce his last name. Brian's feel... his favorite sports. Uh, Brian. Brian asks, where is World of Warcraft with Andy and not Alex? Happening. Okay, not happening. Next question. Okay, next question. Rapid fire. I'm disappointed <laughs> about that one, by the way. Uh, Shadowed King Julian, a.k.a. Kage0 23 on Twitter asks, do you pour the cereal first or the milk? I'm a milk cereal second. first guy. Yeah. That doesn't I, make any sense. I just want to get that. I want to get that milk. Like, when you see the cereal come up just a little bit, that's when you know you got enough milk. So that's why I'm a I'm a cereal first guy. I get the methodology behind milk first, though. It makes a little bit of sense, but no, it doesn't though. Well, to you maybe, but I, I just I like to. I feel like you get more cereal in the bowl if you go milk second. That's very true. That's very true, and I'm I like a lot of cereal. I like just a little bit of milk. I just wanted to. Yeah. I just I just want a little bit of moisture. I don't fan milk. We're past no. chalky milk time, by the way. Oh, uh, we're past chalky milk time. So. Moving on into entertainment slash gaming. I have some things that you don't <laughs> you don't know. I don't know what this is. It just says on this on, on our show notes, it says Andy's splinter cell theory. I want to hear this. I was driving, you know, thinking, and mm -hmm. I thought of something funny that I'd present to you. Yeah. So there's the rumor that the new Xbox is gonna get announced this year at some point. What if there's been rumors of a new splinter cell game? 
what if for the second console generation in a row, Splinter Cell comes out of game? Like, the co- new console, let's say, comes out this November. Not going to happen, but hypothetically. Uh-huh. A new Splinter Cell game comes out next February on the Xbox One. Yeah. Not the new console. And it's going to be called Splinter Cell Whitelist. I just... I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> I feel like it... I just was like, what if it happens again? Every... Like, the same exact thing. Everything you're describing is, like, the worst nightmare of anybody who likes Splinter Cell. It happened, though. That's exactly what I happened. I know, and Splinter I just... Cell Blacklist. You know, I, I can't say this enough, man. Like, Ubisoft... I don't know what is going on <laughs> with them. It's so weird. Like... Splinter Cell, the first one, um, through Chaos Theory, most people consider that to be like the golden age yeah. of Splinter Cell. And those were yeah. great games, and they still are to this day. I liked Double Agent. A lot of people didn't like it. I thought it was pretty good. Was it Double Agent? Was that the name of the game? That's a cop one. I don't know, man. What the hell was the name of the one? On Xbox 360. Yeah, that's on Xbox 360. It was the first one that came out. And your kill your partner, spoiler alert. Oh. That's true. I forgot about that part. Yeah, Splinter Cell Double Agent came out in 06. I really liked that game. Conviction and Blacklist, I didn't play. So shame on me. But I, I just feel like Splinter Cell... It just took a back seat, man. Like... Ghost Recon even took a little bit of a backseat. Like, we went a long period of time in between Ghost Recon games. And, like, meanwhile, it just seems like the Tom Clancy genre, Hawks is gone. Rainbow Six, they've done well with that. But it seems like all their efforts going into Rainbow Six and to uh, a lesser extent, the division. So, I hope that doesn't happen. I have an off script question. Sure. Because uh, I didn't factor in that this is not coming out before E3. Well, E3 will be going on when this comes out. Mm-hmm. What's a game that isn't announced that you want to be announced? Because I have one for the Ubisoft, and that's For Honor 2. It's a good pick. Um, Watch Dogs 3 got leaked, by the way. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm looking forward to it. I love all those games. Watch Dogs 1, excellent. Watch Dogs 2, even better. It's in London, this one. It'll be killer. It'll be killer. What they did with 2 was really great. Like They made the main character younger and a little bit hipper, and I noticed kids were more interested in Watch Dogs 2, partially for that reason. It was a more what? fun main character to play You're with. you saying kids don't like the brick wall of Aiden Pierce? Not really. <laughs> I think it was I think it was a character that was just maybe a little bit too old for like younger players. Yeah. And then also the surrounding characters weren't really good. And with this new game, Watch Dogs Two, the supporting characters, it was a lot of fun. Like they were they had personality and it was fun and they had side quests and it was really well done. Watch Dogs 2. I think you could, like you could find it in a bargain bin. I think they sold it for $10 recently at one store. Um, and it's always on sale digitally. So definitely worth checking out. Watch Dogs 2. I can't say enough good things about that one as well. So Watch Dogs 3. I'm looking forward to it. I don't, want to, I don't mean to pile on Ubisoft. I just, I'm looking at the yeah. release schedule here. The last Splinter Cell game was in 2013. So we've gone six yeah. years in between Black Splinter West. Cell games. It came out February after the Xbox One came out. Oh man! I don't know. Maybe it came out. Did it? It did. 2013. Xbox One came out in 2012. November 2012. Dang. I was was dating my wife. We went to the midnight launch. Ken Griffey Jr. Really? was there. I feel like it was November 2013. Nah, it was November 2012. Uh, November 22nd, 2013. Wait, was it? I feel like yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. I'm I'm the big Xbox I was guy like, here, and I don't even 2K13 know. 2K13 was not the 2K when it came out. Yeah. Well, there you go. And also, I remember that. Well, hope... Uh, 
But it came out August 2013. Oh. I don't know. I remember it was just like it never It, it came out Xbox so came out. late in the Xbox 360 life cycle. And, you know, that's a real thing, too, like where you were saying it didn't sell well because it was towards the end of the console life. Right now, GameStop stock is taking a major hit. And I was listening to their earnings call because I do have stock in GameStop, you know, full disclosure. And I was listening to their earnings call and they were saying like this happens every console generation. And it's certainly true. Like I remember it happened when I worked there right before the 360 yeah. came out. Like nothing's coming out. Everybody's looking towards that next console. The releases slow down. Software sales go down. Hardware sales plummet. It's it's a bad time, man, and uh, we're kind of running into it. I think I don't think the next Xbox comes out this November. I think it comes out no. November twenty twenty would be my prediction. Right I was gonna say Trump gets reelected, but I really don't feel like he will anymore. No, he will. He's getting reelected. They they don't have a single person that can beat him in an election right now. I don't think. And here, here's the thing. All we Trump has to do for me. Well, yeah, I know. Okay. But let's just be real. Like, yeah. all he has to do is get the same people that voted for him to vote for him again. And yeah. he says one sentence, he gets guaranteed back in. What's that one sentence? I'll legalize weed. I mean, there you go. I don't I don't even think it will necessarily come to that. I think that it should be something Not, that, that for gets for looked realness. at. I think Bernie screws up the Democrats. He's so far left that he ruins it for everybody. I think many of the Democrats are too far left, and that includes Hillary. And, you know, for for Trump, like, he just has to keep the voter base that got him in there. And those people received a tax cut. I was one of them. You were one of them. Every working class person in this country takes home an average of 20 to 40 dollars more a pay period because of the tax cut he's obviously got the corporate people on his side he's got enough money to run a campaign for re-election i I just don't see anybody beating him i think it's kind of like obama in 08 no 2012 i'm sorry obama in 2012 where the republicans put up uh god what was his name mitt romney yeah they put up romney romney, but like they did that because they didn't want to put any of their good people up they knew nobody was going to beat obama he was going to easily get reelected, and romney gave him a hell of a run when's the last time someone didn't get reelected? it's they should be reelected. historically it's very hard in modern u.s history it's very hard to unseat an incumbent H-W president. Who? H.W. No, he didn't. He's the last example we have yeah. of a president that didn't get reelected so for three, a second term. No. Wait, did Bill Clinton get reelected? He did. So Eight four years. in a row. Yeah. That would be four in a row, yeah. It's, it's difficult, man. It's difficult. There's a lot of factors I mean, there, a lot of moving You know parts. what you're getting in reelecting versus what you're... Voting or something else. Yeah, and you know, as much as you know, and I, I, I'm not a Trump hater at all. Like very far from it, you know. But even then, I will tell you, sometimes you're like this guy, like just the misstep <laughs> sometimes. But to be fair, a lot of presidents make missteps and yeah. have mistakes and and all that. It's it's a difficult job, and I think that's even more difficult when everybody's scrutinizing every little thing that you do. I mean, Obama certainly suffered from that. George W. Bush did, too. I mean, in today's 24-hour news culture, everything's scrutinized so much more than it was, let's just say, in the Jimmy Carter days in the 70s. So, anyway, moving on. I'm going to do the dumb things first. Mm-hmm. So, I found something on Twitter I thought was pretty interesting. So, The Guardian posted an article yeah. titled, Up to 25 cups of coffee a day is safe for your heart. Study shows. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. 
I'll be honest with you, after two cups of coffee, I can't go any further. I start getting jittery. It says up 25. to 25. <laughs> The guard is trying to kill people. You know, I think it's a little bit dangerous because, like, how can I put this? You can overdose on caffeine. Yeah. What what counts as a cup of coffee, though? I, I mean, I would assume an eight-ounce serving of coffee is considered a cup. And also, if the study found out, that means somebody... Was drinking like thirty cups of coffee a day. I don't know how you could. I don't know how you that's, could. That's a lot. Because you're only up. Let's just say you stay up eighteen hours. That you're, would be you're drinking twenty five cups of coffee. Or... Yeah, that's more than a cup an hour. That's pretty crazy. I don't know if I could see somebody doing that. Plus, for me, coffee is strictly a morning beverage i do not drink it at night i would never go to sleep and i don't drink it in the afternoon because i've usually had one or two and that's all i need yeah i've seen people like that but her body reacts different to caffeine makes her tired it's fair it's fair all right so we both watched a show chernobyl on hbo the most popular thing on imdb the highest rated tv show on IMDb, Chernobyl, five-part miniseries on HBO. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we gonna do spoilery stuff or kind of? Yeah, keep it off the I mean, side? let. So first off, it's a historical event, so spoilers yeah. are kind of, you know, not really spoilers. I, I would tell anybody if you don't want to, like, we do have timestamps. So maybe skip yeah. it if you're worried about spoilers, but I would tell you to pause it and go watch this instead, which kind of gives away how I feel about this show. But yeah, um, Andy, so, uh, how did you how did you like it? Oh, I it it was pretty scary. Yeah, like <laughs> actually, it isn't like scary. Like oh god, I can't sleep at night. There's the boogeyman, but like it, it's scary on two ends. It really, you know, radioactive or like. You know, obviously it's bad for you. Like, ev- like everyone knows that. But like, I don't know how much it affects you. Kind of like opens my mind. It's like, it's really messed up, what it does to you. Um, and also like how like the government is just like it wasn't all well, the Russian government it was just like how incompetent everyone was. Like. There was they just refused to accept new facts. Like they'd be like, "Oh, the core exploded," and the guy was like, "Explain to me how that happened." Oh, you can't. Didn't happen then. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But before I get more into a deep dive, what was your thoughts on the show? Or initial thoughts, I guess. So initial thoughts were like one. Visually, I feel like they shot it oh, it's beautifully. Yeah. I thought there were moments to me that were unforgettable. The one that really stuck out to me was when they sent the three divers in to shut off that valve in that water. Yeah, which is factually untrue. Or there's parts of it. Well, yeah, I mean... They did take some creative liberties, but to me, that shot was yeah. epic. Like, it was really wonderfully done. When and the then, lights go off, that's like, that's another yeah. part of the scary part. Like, that's and, like, like, they have oh the man. hand crank flashlights, yeah. you know. And Well, they did, like, a little, like, cutoff, like, the end of episode two, I think. You don't see yeah. the hand cranks? Or yeah. Like... Yeah, th- there, were, there were some moments like that that I thought were just such epic shots that, like, you'll just never forget. It sticks with you, you know, and... Yeah. Um, another part was like in the first episode, the firefighters showing up and they think it's a roof fire and they quickly realize yeah. it's not. And, you know, just the, the audio was great on this as well. I thought they used some really cool effects. Like, you know, obviously do- dosimeters are not that loud. 
but they but, used yeah. it as a way to kind of convey like yeah, the level like everyone of, knows that sound yeah and it, everyone, it, like, everyone knows what it's it was such telling. a smart choice to use that though because it kind of showed you like how how bad the radiation was it kind of communicates that to the audience through sound as as opposed to hitting you over the head with it uh the acting was really well done yeah, they had i can't scars guard yeah great actor i can't think of a single acting performance in this series that left me wanting more they were all just really i'm sorry siri for some reason thinks that i'm talking to my phone but um yeah like great acting uh, great visuals, phenomenal sound editing. Yes, they took creative liberties, but if you go back and look, yeah, they, at the very end, they also explain it. Like, they explained they it at the end. Show all the facts. Yeah, and I mean, I felt like it was historically accurate for the most part, as historically accurate as you can be and still be. You know, a five-part series uh, yeah. rather than a documentary. Thing, there's a lot of hate on it because it. They're English actors, not Russian, and they're speaking English. Um, but I kind of made a point that how that makes the show better if it's in English. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I don't know about you, but if someone's just, like, talking Russian, I don't know, like, the emotion they're, like, talking in, you know? No, you're right. And I can't feel it. That's but, fair. Like, in the show, you can feel, like, you can, like, feel the fear or, like, the... Like, at some points, like, when people are sad, you can feel it. Or, like, how serious this is. He's like, we got to do this, you know? Yeah, I just, I thought overall, like, initially going in, the first 20 minutes of the show had me completely hooked. Yeah. Many of you out there listening know that I'm a huge advocate for nuclear power. And I realize that Chernobyl is one of two disasters involving nuclear power plants that people point to as to why we shouldn't pursue nuclear power as a, a species, not even as a society or a country, like just a, in general worldwide. But I think that this show, and, and I mean, obviously um, Andy might disagree with this part, but like, I feel like this show, what it, what it really did a great job of was not only covering a historical event that I think a lot of our, younger folks in this country are not even aware of like my yeah. sister has no idea she's she's your age I mean, um I and did, she but... had no idea what chernobyl was my wife is a couple years younger than i am and she wasn't really knowledgeable on it either what i found is that the only people who really knew what happened at chernobyl that were my age or younger were people that took the time to go out and research it read books i knew et about it i knew everything about it but i well, never like deep dive I watched the Chernobyl Diaries, that movie, like 2011, 2012. So then you did more research um, than like no, I watched 90 percent of people long ago. Yeah, <laughs> so like more. So and like also played like COD four. Yeah, and like well, maybe some people, maybe that was like the little morsel for some people where they yeah. did more research. But like I've read about Chernobyl. Uh, for years before this, um, because it, it fascinates me. Uh, obviously, nuclear power is something that fascinates yeah. me, and I'm still a very big advocate of it, despite what happened there and at Three Mile Island. But it also explains how nuclear power works. Yeah, in a very, very basic yeah. and um, understandable way, and they, uh, eloquently explained. Yeah. yeah, and like overall. What I walked away from this saying is this isn't a warning against nuclear power. And this isn't a warning against socialism because a lot of people yeah. took it to be that. This is a warning about states, governments, you know, KGB, which is basically yeah. the easiest thing that you could equate it to would be the CIA here in the U.S., being so dead set on protecting the state at all costs to where it's a detriment to citizens and how a government sometimes will put itself before its citizens, which should never happen. Yeah. And that's and what always, happened all here. All history has happened. Yeah. And it just, it shouldn't happen. The government is there to protect the people and to tackle issues that people can't 
you know, tackle themselves. Like, for example, the government has the CDC, right? Because I can't go out and control diseases. The government has the means to do that. So that's part of their job, right? But the government shouldn't be there trying to protect its own state interests at citizens' detriment. And that's what happened at Chernobyl. And I thought it was very masterfully told over, God, what was it? Probably about five not five hours it's probably about six or seven hours long, yeah, every right? episode's an hour and five minutes long so. yeah i mean but it was just so well done man i just i could and it really captured the feeling of helplessness like yeah. every time you thought it couldn't get worse it got worse it didn't really capture me i wish it did mm-hmm. like i enjoyed everything about it but i wasn't like hooked Oh, it's hooked. We Which watched how affects my rating. We watched three episodes in one night. Ashley fell asleep. We watched the fourth episode the next day. I watched three episodes and then watched two episodes like a couple hours ago. Yeah. So beautifully um, done. I I would say right now it is the best TV miniseries I've ever seen. It. It was... I, I don't rank it above Band of Brothers. Fair enough. That, to me... To me, it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. They're both great. But, for me, it was filmed... Movie quality production. I mean, it yeah. was beautifully filmed. Audio was great. Casting was great. They went to great lengths... One thing that I really liked is they went to great lengths to make sure that the wardrobe fit not only the setting, but the era. It was masterfully done. Like, there's two pictures at the end of the actual people, and they're masterfully done. They did, yeah, they did so well with it. And their attention to detail, there's so many stories that you could pull out of the Chernobyl disaster. There's dozens hundreds and i felt like they picked all the good ones and they told them well and it, it just exceptional i i stand by it it's the best series i've ever watched uh so what'd you give out of 10 we kind of doubling up on dc film come kind of i know but, but i think this movie I, I think the i almost called it a movie i think this series is good enough to do that. i give it eight and a half out of ten i give the same thing or eight and a half no i gave it eight my bad it's outstanding it's outstanding. If you if you think it's gonna be boring, if you're not interested in it, just I watch can't one episode. Explain how I wasn't hooked. It I just wasn't like it's great. I get the it. Acting's amazing. Everything's amazing about it, but I wasn't just like sunk into it. I felt that way about like at first. You know, I know a lot of people consider it to be one of the best TV shows of all time, and I agree with that. Uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad didn't hook me at first. It took a uh, while. So, I mean, sometimes that happens, you know? One, that's kind of one thing I didn't really mention, but I have it on my notes. Mm-hmm. About uh, the, incompetency, the incompetency of the higher-ups mm-hmm. is that it kind of shows, like, to reference a book or a movie that people may have seen, Animal House, it showed how, like, People in the higher positions don't even deserve to have the jobs, because I think it's in the first episode. The chick, the the girl was like, "You worked in a shoe factory before you got this job." And he, he was, was like, just oh, I have the job. He was just a crony. I mean, and yeah. that happens. Go watch Animal House if you haven't seen it, it. It happens today. Or read the read the book. They're they're wanting to put. People in positions like Ben Carson, you know, as a head of, I think, the HUD. And yeah. he's not knowledgeable on real estate at all. You know, and it, like, it just goes to show, man, like, party politics can screw so many things up. And we have a problem with that in this country. That's why I said this isn't a problem about socialism. This is a problem about pol- party politics and, like, the state putting its needs first. The the party Government putting power. its needs first. Uh, worrying about international perception being considered weak. You know, you name it. 
these are all things that it's you know the it, it basically is the road to hell paved with good intentions yeah it's good to appear strong internationally yeah it's good that the government is perceived as having everything in control but you can't do that at the detriment of your citizens like you know it's not the right thing to do and um you know furthermore i just totally forgot my point but i <laughs> It's just like it, it's just so well done how they frame it up and show that you reminded me of uh, Napoleon when you're talking about that earlier. What's that? Because like everyone's like Napoleon's such a great leader or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he, he even said himself, he's like whenever he was winning so many wars, he's like he said, I win these wars because I spend 30,000 troops a month. Yeah, it's no, Napoleon's actually a really in the fun... World War One. France spent thirty thousand people in a day. Yeah, Napoleon's a really fun historical figure to like deep dive into and Let see like eat cake. Louis yeah, Louis like look it's at also cool. Yeah, like it, it's it's a historical figure that I think we could still learn a lot from both good and bad because there was a lot of good with napoleon but there was also a lot of bad and i think that like every government's like that man you know and it, it like and that's why i say this this isn't an anti-socialism piece and, and I, I saw people on twitter trying to throw that rhetoric out there and it's just not it's not this is it, it really should be considered a piece about what government should mean and yeah. what can happen when government doesn't put its top priority first? Ooh, it just hit me. It also did a good thing about like it kind of like it just saying like, oh, we had to make people uh, vacate their homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they kind of like showed you more. Like that old lady was like, "I've lived here my entire life. I'm not leaving." And it showed how like they literally forced people to leave. Yeah, and a lot of those people actually. The ones who are really resistant to leave, some of them actually move back. There's a small population that still lives in that exclusion zone. And even though that's illegal, they still live there. And some of those people have, you know, family histories tied to that land. So yeah. it's easy to understand why. It, it was just a really good series overall, and I would encourage everybody to go check it out. I was right really upset that I had to buy a month of HBO, <laughs> like a second month of HBO to watch Game of Thrones because it was only six episodes, right? So it's like they know they're going to get me for two months. And this, to me, justified the cost of that second month alone. And it, it was it was outstanding. I paid for HBO now because the pirate weren't happy with this one well i would tell people support to this one we we need more <laughs> they are yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have it. we need more series like this honestly and the best thing about it is like a lot of things that have come out recently i feel like younger people will watch this and learn something new yeah. They're, they're going to learn something that they might have not known anything about beforehand. And that's wonderful. It's much better to watch that than stupid things like Big Brother. Anyway. What? <laughs> no, yeah, a bunch of, bunch of people running around in a house, getting taped. They pick out all the Chernobyl good bits. Chernobyl is the most popular TV show on, on uh, IMDb. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Anyway, it moving has on. a... Oh. 9.7 out of 151,000 reviews. It's kind of nice to see everybody get together once in a while and just agree that something's really good. Because so often, we're such a cynical society now. You know, I think social media has made us that way. I think 24-hour news coverage has made us that way, too. But, like, we're so cynical nowadays. It was kind of nice to see people across the board be like, oh, Chernobyl's awesome, and I love this. And the director of it has, he's a TV show director, but like he's done a lot of show. Like he's done The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, Vikings, Bates Motel, Bloodline. 
Oh, so all kinds of good stuff. But he's only done like a couple episodes for each thing. I mean, he directed the entire show this. Well, good for him, man. He has five upcoming projects. I feel like the guy all could right. do movies. He was that good. Anyway, moving on to DC Film Club. It was Andy's yeah. pick this week. He picked, picked Fantastic, Fantastic Planet. Planet from 1973. It's a foreign or, film. I I I learned how to say it in French, but isn't I, it like La Planète Sauvage? Yeah, that's something like that. Yeah, I completely forgot what it was. But Fantastic Planet 1973. I've never seen it. You've never seen it. Nope. Um, it was interesting. Hmm. Um, I feel like you would really like it. Uh, based off the whole Altox alien stuff. <laughs> um. So yeah. basically, you know, spoiler warning, everybody. Uh, On a 46-year-old <laughs> movie. I, I mean, you know, you got you to gotta do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the animation was kind of bad, but... I don't know. I liked, I liked it, but at the same time, I feel like the, anima- like, the animation kind of like threw it off a little bit. Uh, did you watch it subtitled or dubbed? So I watched it subtitled to try and I watched see it. it. Well. So I don't know French. I yeah. I mean, I could probably stumble through a conversation in French, but that's about it. So I watched it subtitled because I figured that's the closest thing to watching yeah. it natively in that language. Yeah. Oh, you, it's watch, a really... you, you watch subtitled, right? Yeah, I think you're, yeah, I thought you said that. Okay. It was really weird. Mm, well, yeah. <laughs> but I really like it. It shows like a whole other planet in the future or past. I can't tell you. Um, where we're on a different planet and we're not the dominant creature, and we're treated as pets. Yeah. And it was. Like, I don't even know how to like put my thoughts into words. Hmm. It was weird. What'd you think about it? Well, I agree with the weird part. I don't agree on the animation part. I thought the animation was really good considering this was obviously... I, I, the animation was great, but there was yeah. parts to where, like... There was parts where, like, I, the time... The time showed, like, that it came out in the 70s. No, I agree with you there. 100%. That makes no, that makes a lot of like, sense. Like, it looks beautiful and everything. I liked it. I thought it was weird. I thought it was off the wall. I thought it kind of had a little bit of a psychedelic look to it. I know that when I did a little bit of research on this movie after watching it, that many people said that they watched it under the influence of psychedelic drugs. I certainly did not. You guys know I don't do drugs, never have, never will. But, well, not illegal drugs, certainly not psychedelic ones. Anyway, I like the art style. I like the art style. It's a little bit weird. It throws you a little bit off. Like as soon as as soon as it hits you, like boom, comes right out. Blue people, red eyes, all kinds of yeah. imaginative creatures. It, also, it doesn't explain anything, which I like. No, I like it's, that because I kind of have to fill in the blanks. In the wor- That's what. I was, yeah, I like that. It throws you in a world where, like, even the plants, even like the everything, is something new. Yeah, and like they showed a lot of things that were. If I understand the premise correctly, it's that humans were brought to this planet like kind of like yeah. as like a, like kind of like a zoo, right? To yeah. have like an example of what a human brought, looks like. like. Pets. Yeah, and then like there are all these other species that were brought there too from other planets and like they show them throughout the film. And they're very imaginative. Like they're they don't look like anything There's like on the Earth. Venus flytrap thing that like grabs it and laughs. Yeah, like there's all kinds of weird creatures that they show throughout, and I like that. And I I like that it's original in its art style. I I thought it was appealing to the eye. You know, does the actual animation, the motion portion of the animation, does it leave a little bit to be desired? Absolutely. But it's hand-drawn animation that was probably yeah. made on a very slim budget. Um, I would venture a guess that this was an independent film 
that this was not something Kinda. that had um yeah i couldn't really figure that part out it's really difficult to find solid information on this because of because of its age but and also uh, it's a french foreign film <laughs> yeah and there, there's that part too from the 70s but uh you know, visually it was really good. Audio was good for its era. Um, I will also say that the writing, while it does kind of hit you over the head, it's yeah. it's not very eloquent in its message or subtle. It's, their subtlety is not this film's strong suit. Yeah. But it does have a positive message and it does hit home. And I think there's three themes that I walked away with that I think this film accomplishes well. And and to that's a credit to this film that it can bring three themes to the table. One, animal rights. Yeah. How would you like it if you were an animal and you were treated like the alms? AKA the humans, which is it's man in French spelled different though. Exactly. Um, so one thing I do like the, speaking of that is mm-hmm. how like, uh, what's her name? The, the girl, the little girl. Um, Oh, it starts with a T doesn't it? Tiva or something like that. Tiva. Yes. She, uh, she treats them how like an actual 10 year old girl would treat like a hamster. Which is like it's a weird, like super careless and like abusive to it. Yeah, I, I definitely picked up on that, and I just, I think that it it talks to animal rights. I think that it also has some undertones about racism, like, or class, like holding yeah. one class down. So, for example, they get really angry when they find out that the humans have learned to read. Yeah. They get angry when they find out that the humans are organizing. They get yeah. upset and threatened when humans develop a civilization with weapons. They are originally they're angry and it's like, Oh, screw them. They're animals. But then later on, it's like, Oh, they're a threat. Now we really have a, and to me, that's kind of like not necessarily so much racism, but like the civil rights movement would be a very good example of that here in the U S where a class of people was held down. And when they started showing signs of unifying and saying, we're not going to, we're not going to deal with it. Yeah. That's another really good example you know, and then even going back to medieval times, you know, serfs, you know, were not even working class. They were the poor class. They worked for basically nothing. Um, it was really close to slavery, like when you really go back and look at it. And the worst thing about it was the ruling class didn't want them to become literate because they felt that if they became literate, they would become a threat. And I thought that this film in a not so subtle way made kind of hit us with that theme. And then I would also say that, you know, there were moments where, uh, you know, the, the drugs have like this God complex. They're playing God. Well, we're just going to eliminate them as a species altogether. And it, like, what it does a really good job of in this movie is it shows, like, that's one that's not really the right path to take, and two, that can lead to some very dangerous results. So, like, to bring something into your world that's foreign to it, and then when it goes awry, as those things normally do, you can't play God and say, well, we're just going to wipe it off the face of our planet. It's terrible. I mean, how humans play God with animals. We do. We do. And it's, you know, I, I read a report the other day. They're putting cybernetic pieces inside of pigeons. They're making a robot pigeon. You know, yeah. like, it, it, we're we're going too far with it, man. You know, like, we, we already started with the cloning stuff. 
it's a real slippery slope. And I, I just think overall, this this film did it. It wasn't subtle. And that would be the one thing that I would take away from it is that I feel like it's a little bit too like in your face with this message. And I would yeah. have preferred a little bit more subtlety. But overall, a good one. It's it's a good it's a good message and it's a good film and it it, it was really fun to watch and um I will say this <laughs> I've never seen anything else like it it's yeah, very, very unique I went into I'm telling y'all I was like for like the longest time I'm gonna pick unique obscure stuff and I this is the first one of that group of bunch that's coming up didn't even know it existed before this I feel like you'll uh, next next one I feel like you won't know exists either. Um. Yeah, I feel like I I want to like it more than I actually did on my rating. Yeah. With that said, what did you give it out of ten? I gave it a seven out of ten. Give yeah, it a five. Mm. I yeah. want to like it more than I like. <laughs> it's the same. It's like Chernobyl. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm I just like in a you. weird mood. You know, I originally I was thinking I would give it a lower rating myself, but when I really sat down and thought about it, I couldn't, again, I, I, I take a little bit away because of, like I said, it just, it lacks subtlety, but yeah, I mean, if that's the worst thing I could come up with, you know, I feel like I would like it better if I watched, I did dub version instead, but I don't subtitle. No, I I really liked this, and I thought the voice acting was really brilliantly done. Like I loved the way this movie sounded, yeah. it, even though it was in a foreign language. Like I, it will have a record though. Mm -hmm. Most titties in a film club. <laughs> it definitely, it definitely had a lot of uh, blue. It's rated PG, by the way. There was a lot of blue boobage, and there was a lot of white boobage. Every character. Literally, like, every single one had a nip out. Yeah. Good one. I would yeah. tell everybody, if you didn't watch it for this podcast, go out there and find it. It's it's really good. It's on uh, Amazon for $4, I think. Yeah. It's affordable to watch. Really good one. I think everybody Almost should watch it at too. least once. Yeah, you, uh, so, yeah. Just watch it once. It's really good. All right, Alex. So my uh my notes say a different movie than yours, by the way. Well, I I cannot read this, but uh, I <laughs> mine will tell says uh, Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, mine says something <laughs> much worse than yeah, that. I'm aware of what yours says. So there was a movie that Andy found. Uh, if you DM me yeah, on we... tw if you DM me on Twitter, <laughs> if you DM at Dead Channel Duo on Twitter, I will I will DM you back the name we of the movie. Not say the name of no. the movie. Can't say the movie on this podcast, but um, it's it's pretty brutal. Uh, but if you DM us, I will DM you back with the, the movie title. But I, Andy found this movie, and when <laughs> I found it on Reddit, yeah, I didn't he, just find the movie. Oh, okay. I thought you just randomly came across it somehow. No, I was like, I, oh, okay. I found it. It was like on Reddit. Someone's like, "Can you believe this is real?" See, I thought you were like going down the rabbit hole on IMDb, and you came across this thing, but. Andy found Just this movie the first that word. today they could never make a movie with this title. But even oh no, even though this was made in 1993, even then it's, I feel it's like made in Denmark. Even then I feel like it's just <laughs> it's such a I want to watch name. it. I kind of want to watch. So I sent it to my wife, and my wife says I need to watch this. <laughs> so I'm currently on a mission on where we can watch this thing, just so that me and my wife yeah. can All right, have so a good laugh. What, what's your pick, Alec? So, yeah, you're funny. So, my pick this week is something a little bit more modern. Uh, it's a movie that I watched recently and I think tells a great story. I won't go much more into it than that. Uh, I know some people will be very upset that this is not available on streaming services. I'm sorry. It's an independent. <laughs> it's every week thing. Now. I'm sorry. It's an independent oh, movie. Uh... Gran Torino is on Netflix now, like a week after we did that episode. Go watch Gran Torino. It's amazing. So, uh, this is an independent movie, so unfortunately, those usually don't see Netflix or whatever. It's Another Earth from 2011. So, 
Andy, have you seen that movie? No. Okay. Yeah. Never even heard about it. It wasn't a huge financial success, obviously. It has 85,000 votes on IMDb. Yeah. Well, it's a good one. I watched it recently, and it was one of those weird movies. Andy put it best. I, I think he has a more eloquent way of saying this, but uh, Andy says said on one podcast, I'd have to go back and find it. He's like, I know a movie's good when I keep thinking about it after I watch it. Yeah, I said that about 2001 Space Odyssey. Yeah, you said something like way more, like better than I just framed it up. But like, I kind of feel the same way about movies. And I watched this one and I just couldn't get it out of my head. It was just so good. Um, so yeah, Another Earth 2011. Hope you guys Are you enjoy say it. I'm watch this one three times like I did in 2001. No, I don't think it'll be like that. But <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's it's n- what I don't think you've picked a single movie besides Road Trip that I've seen before. I try to pick things that you haven't seen, and I also I feel like try that's to... easier for me than it. Like, I feel like me picking movies that you haven't seen is easier than you picking movies that I haven't seen. You're probably right, and I also try to pick things that I don't think are. Our listeners have I want, seen. Yeah, I'm, too. Tra- I'm picking. St- I try to pick stuff that no one has seen. Yeah, especially I mean, Fantastic Planet. <laughs> yeah, like I when I went into this one because there, there's another movie that I almost picked, and that'll be my next pick. And that one, I think some people, um, maybe you've seen for, it as for well. Those that are also, by the way, Film Club number twenty. Uh, this your pick? Oh wow. Um. For people that are mad that we don't pick things on Netflix, my next one is on Netflix, unless they remove it between now and then. Yeah, I'm I'm so sorry, guys. I know that was an early request, and I totally get the <laughs> request, and I and understand. And there's been complaints about it since then, though. I know, but, like, here's the thing. Like, I, I've been trying to pick things as I just alluded to that you may not have seen before. And generally speaking, the stuff on Netflix, let's just call it what it is. The stuff on Netflix is generally stuff that people have seen a billion times. Like the movies stuff on Netflix. They have some weird stuff. Netflix suggests things that everyone's seen. Yeah. They have stuff, but like it's not suggested to you. I'm looking for stuff that's good mean something this is coming from the guy who picked road trip and Freddy got fingered i get it okay so if you're if you're sitting there like punching your steering wheel like this guy's an idiot he picked Freddy got fingered <laughs> and road trip back to back i get it but like after that i kind of sat myself down and i said like let's try to do something like more serious that's thought provoking and that people will like and i think this movie yeah. I was I was really uh, impressed with catch it. up on Film Club. There's a link in the description to take you to an IMDb list. Yeah, there you go. It's all twenty of them. There you go. Uh, it, we've picked a lot of good ones. I mean, I've this has become my favorite segment of the show. By the way, like I've watched a lot of good movies. I've no. rewatched a lot of good movies, but like there's been m- the majority of them I haven't seen before. So my uh, uh, to talk about cool. my next pick again. Mm. I'm gonna apologize now. Uh, I don't think it's a good movie. No, uh, well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Watch, watch me actually end up liking it. All right, head into sports. Yep. Another topic to where you don't know what I'm bringing to the table. Similar, similar to the start, sit, cut stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you: Are these players a Hall of Famer? Okay. I have four players. There's someone I was thinking about. I was like, man, is this guy a Hall of Famer? And I press some more. So the one I was thinking about in my car is Andre Iguodala. No. A Hall of Famer. No. No, he was never the best player. So for me, for you to be a Hall of Famer. like 15 and 7. I don't care. Career. Yeah, I don't care. You know, here's the thing. Like, with Andre Iguodala, this is how I'll remember him. He was a really good bench player and a starter for one NBA Finals team in the Warriors. Beyond yeah, that, NBA Finals teams. Well, no, but I mean, I'm, I, he was <laughs> yeah. a, he was a starter in that one NBA Finals. Oh yeah, remember they started him after Game Two. So I'll always remember him as a guy who, 
You know who I would compare Andre Iguodala to? Just in terms of career arc, not the actual way they played. Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose put up great numbers on a lot of crappy basketball teams. And the only time he made a deep playoff run was when he wasn't the best player on that team. So, no, Andre Iguodala, no. Jalen Rose literally gave up a lot of points. AKA 81 to Kobe. Yeah. Jalen Rose was a terrible defender, by the way, but he was like liquid offense, like unbelievable offensively. Man, only if Chris Webber didn't call timeout. Too soon, man. Too soon. Not really. Is it? <laughs> like, I'm just messing around. What happened to like what? Uh, I'm not the even early know. 90s, late 80s. I don't 80s? even care. Those, I don't know. those guys were getting paid to play at Michigan anyway. I think it was like uh, 92. 91, 92, yeah. somewhere around there, because Weber got drafted in 93. I want to know your opinion. Is Andre Iguodala a Hall of Famer to you? Well, the fact that, well, one, the Naismith Hall of Fame is broken. Uh, like, p- players, there's no NBA Hall of Fame. It's the Naismith Hall of Fame. Yeah, you're right, okay. In which dumb people get elected to it all the time. All right, well, I'm I'm going to say no to Andre Iguodala. No. no? Okay. Next is Julian Edelman. <laughs> it, it, I feel like this should be dumb things that Andy finds on Twitter again, because that was there an was earlier topic. There was a lot of discussion about No, I, so I don't think but, Julian Edelman's a Hall of Fame receiver. And no. the reason I say that is there are guys with better numbers that haven't gotten in. And I just, I don't, to me, a Hall of Famer in the NFL at a position like wide receiver needs to be somebody who you would say they were top three, top five with their position for a huge chunk of their career in the league. And I don't think that, I don't think I'd ever put Julian Edelman in my top five in the NFL right now for all of them. Well, let me ask you, let me turn it back on you. Do you think, okay. I'm picking players that like are kind of like they're they're. I don't. Know. I wasn't picking obvious. Highlighters. Like, let's be real. Like, I'm trying to think of the receiver recently, where somebody came to me and they're like, "This guy should be in the Hall of Fame," and I was like, "No," because this guy's not in, and if he doesn't get in, like, why should that guy get in? I'm trying Next to think of is... who it was. Navarro Bowman. So that's probably the guy who has the best case out of everybody to get in. I don't think he'll get any consideration. But out of the three people that you mentioned, you you could probably talk me into Navarro Bowman. Honestly. And last... Dustin Pedroia. <laughs> this one's a biased one. I just threw it in there. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to take back what I said about Navarro Bowman because I think I feel like Dustin Pedroia is out, out of all, and not saying that Bowman doesn't have a good case because I think he does. Um, I think Pedroia has a really good case too. And here's why I would say he has a good case because he he was a good player for a, a considerable amount of time on a, a, yeah. I shouldn't say good great player for a considerable amount of time Elite in defender yeah in in a major market which is Boston I think at the very least Dustin Pedroia's number gets retired yeah I think he's earned that I don't know if the do the Boston Red Sox routinely retire numbers some franchises don't do it and, I mean I don't know routinely uh, I don't know well. So, I, I mean, like they have obviously 42, um, 9, 4, 1, 8, 27, 6, 14, 45, 26, 34. They retired Wade Boggs number and I think they should retire. Uh, and I they like, Wade, I like Wade Boggs. <laughs> that would be a guy who I would kind of question why you would retire his number, but uh, nevertheless, he's best pitcher on a, to in the drought. Yeah. I I like Dustin Pedroia. I just you know the thing about Dustin Pedroia is I feel like his 
his injury problems have really oh, his career is over. Yeah, kind of hampered his career. But I'm looking at I'm looking at his stats right now. He had three, six, nine, nine good years, I think. And if you add a couple of those half seasons together, those were pretty good years too. I, I, I think that he'll get consideration. I don't think he gets in on the first ballot, but I think that he does yeah, he's a eventually. Lover. Do you think he's a Hall of Famer? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least... It's not on the topics list. Toronto Raptors are up two to one. Yeah, I did see that they uh, had a pretty good game for themselves there. Yeah, Clay Thompson's out, Kevon Looney's out, Katie's out. The Warriors are all injured, but oh. to not use that against them, do you think that this builds momentum for Toronto? Possible Taking a game at Oracle? No, I don't think that there's even really. Though, even though all these players are injured. Uh, I think it builds momentum because I mean a win is a win, especially yeah. when it's a best of seven series. Like, <laughs> don't look that gift horse in the mouth. And they took home court advantage back. Yeah, I, and that means everybody will get a free taco at Taco Bell eventually. No, but, they did. The Warriors went on away game. Oh, I thought that you got. I thought they were doing a free taco every time it happened. Steal game, steal. No, it's just June eighteenth. Oh well, there you go. June eighteenth, go get your free taco. Anyway. Uh, I, I don't I don't know like that I want to use the term momentum because I feel like this series is going to be very back and forth. I mean, I picked Raptors in seven initially. I almost feel like the Warriors will win game four and then they go back to Toronto and it's just going to go back and forth, man. It's going to be a good series, though. It's a good thing, like, you know, getting good basketball out of it. It'll be really weird if Toronto wins and then Kawhi Leonard leaves. Like He how, bought a house in Toronto. How weird will that be? Which doesn't say anything, but he did buy a house in Toronto. Well, I don't know. I mean, if I'm Toronto, I, I, I think right now Toronto has, out of every team that would be courting him in free agency, I don't care. I think they have the best case for Kawhi signing with Fun. them. Uh, but, as a New York Nick hater myself, yeah, there's a 75% chance Kyrie Irving signs with the Brooklyn Nets. So shout out to you, Nick fans, and your horrible franchise. Yeah, I, I don't know. Apparently I don't know. he's not, he's between them and LA. That's it. So we've been playing this game of nicks having salary cap and they're gonna sign all these <laughs> free agents we've been playing that for over 10 years now i don't know if you realize that but like the last time the new york knicks were good we were still in nom there was a period of time when lebron did the decision which i believe was ooh, what uh, was that yeah there was a period of time where the Knicks were saying, like, yeah. 2010? 2011? 2010. 2010, because they made the 2011. 2010, and they... Yeah, they played uh, Spurs 2011. Finals. They courted the him and Dwayne Wade, and they basically told LeBron, we will sign you, and then you can bring anybody with you you want, basically. Yeah. And... They've been playing that game forever. They've been trying to get Max free agent. They ended up settling on uh, Amari Stoudemire. Great. So, <laughs> well, you know what? Amari Stoudemire gave them one good year. The The knee injuries took their toll and after took that. so much money. He did take a lot of money. But you know what? That one year, they did go to the playoffs. And in my opinion, Amari Stoudemire was the MVP that year. If it wasn't for Stoudemire, that team wouldn't have won 20 games. It was a really bad roster, but Stoudemire got them there. And then they made the Carmelo trade, and him and Carmelo just never really gelled together. I, I, I don't really feel like those two were compatible no. to begin with. But, yeah, I, I just I feel bad for Knicks fans, man. I think it's on ownership, you know. And James Dolan. 
it, you know, I don't want to go into a Marlins rant here because I know everybody's tired of hearing me talk about the damn Marlins. Hey, but Marlins are on a two-game win streak. Yeah, and they're they're twelve and five in their last seventeen games as we record this. So they're they're playing better. That being said, they're still one of the worst teams in baseball, and they have the second lowest payroll. But the team that has the lowest payroll is the you know Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Uh, yeah. I call them the Devil they're Rays. Right they're just the Rays, and um, you know, it just goes to show that good management even with a small payroll can make it happen. You look at the Chris Archer trade, you know, the Rays came out of that looking like a million bucks here. Yeah. The Marlins are, they had, in my opinion, the best asset in all of baseball, Christian Yelich on a team friendly contract. And John they Carlo. flipped them for what? Well, John Carlo, here's the, here's the problem with John Carlo Stanton. That contract is an abomination. He's I mean, you know, massively overpaid. It's very different in the Marlins when they traded Who's that contract to Giancarlo Stanton or Chris Paul. Chris Paul. Chris Paul because I feel like Stanton still gives you something high above a replacement level player whereas I think no. Chris Paul gives you something that's above a replacement level player well above a replacement level player but still not elite enough to justify the price tag um so yeah i, I would i would say chris paul so you want to call it an episode yeah we're, we're running up on time here anyway so yeah that's gonna be dcd number 32 wait right 32 okay yeah um so uh real quick before we end off, uh, one minute of promotion. So uh, we are on all kinds of platforms. I added us onto three more audio-only platforms. So if you're watching the video version of the podcast, you go, man, I really wish there was an audio-only version. Go to deadchannelduo.com. At the very top, there are links to every place that we're out there in terms of audio. We're like on everything now other than SoundCloud. And uh, iHeartRadio continues to evade me. But nevertheless... Check that out. If you're listening to the audio-only version, you want to see the video version, you want to see Andy flip his cat around a couple times because he keeps He's jumping up on his desk. Tonight. What? He's all lovey-dovey tonight. I know. He's, like, really clingy. Uh, we are on YouTube. Just search for Dead Channel Duo. Uh, you can even find YouTube at deadchannelduo.com. And then uh, leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, it's soon to just become the podcast app, but uh, until then, iTunes, leave us a review on there if you do. You leave your name, I'll give you a shout out and a fun fact about yourself. Also, t shirts. Link in the description for DCD t shirts. Every single one you buy gives us about $6. Uh, if it's on sale, we get like three, but I don't care. Buy it when it's on sale, buy it at a regular price. Helps us out, helps us support the podcast. Andy, anything you want to say about Boston sports before we close off Bruins? Nope. Doing pretty good, right? Nope. Okay, Andy doesn't have anything. So, it's going to do it for DCD32. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Alex is a rotten egg. <laughs>